Next is about the Upakramas, the, uh, among them the first is the Abhadarpanam. Abhadarpanam Adhyaha Upakramaha, Yesha Sarva Shopanam Samanyaha Pradharamasya, Bhavanti Jatra, Dosha Utshaya Upashatyartham Dosha Nathasya Dehinaha, Avekshya Dosham Pranamta Karyam Syad Abhadarpanam, Urdhva Marta Trishna Akshutu Mukha Shosha Shamanya Dehi, Nakaryam Darbhini Vrutta Parandun Padabhirubhi, Apadarpana is a langhan and the methods of langhana they are described in different manners like it could be just uh, laghu ahara see langhana is not really total fasting but laghuashanam langhana uh, food which is easily digested and which doesn't produce a metabolic load that's uh, the langhana and uh, the all other protocols of the langana are like uh, exposure to the sunlight or exercise and uh, the other dietary factors also. Uh, Swedana also is a sort of the apadarpana langana. But here when it comes to the question of apadarpana, it's mainly about the dietary restriction where you will be having uh, easily digestible food with the, the limitations. Never in excess. Excess of the food is not given. And that's the Apadarpana. Uh, and it's considered to be one of the most important remedy for all sorts of the inflammatory swelling. Sarvashopanam Samanya. It's a considered to be, you know, it's important like Sushra has described this as a, a one of the important protocol to reduce any sort of the inflammation 5000 years ago. Dosha Utshaya Upashantyatam. This is the one which reduces the possibility of aggravation of the doshas or any of the pathological uh, changes in the body can be reduced as it and it's also useful in the management of the wound and the, whenever you advise this uh, fasting or maybe the langhana you should consider the uh, condition of the body patients who have a this retrograde uh, peristalsis orthomorphic retrograde peristalsis like where the patient is already having vomiting or uh, yeah, or Trishna, excess of thirst, or patient who is really hungry, or patient who is uh, emaciated, garbhini in the pregnant woman, or very old or very young children, it should not be advised with the old doctor of the restriction. Now, when it comes to the question of fasting and the wound healing, they initially, uh, rather in the earlier days of the Western medicine, is a, in a case of wound management, it was considered like you should give more food, more nourishing food was considered to be the primary protocol of wound healing than really the fasting. But gradually from 2016 onwards, the idea of fasting benefiting the inflammatory pathology came up after the Nobel Prize ever in 2016, Osho Me, on the subject of the uh, fasting and its beneficial effects. Uh, the whole theory of this uh, uh, Nobel Prize winner is about the presence of uh, the autophagy. The, if you eat more, the oxidants and free radicals will be producing the damage to the body and it will be producing the uh, what we call as systemic information pathologies and it can be a cause for all the diseases. Now, Right. From then on, there are many lots of researchers on different fields. When it comes to the question of wound healing, there is a very interesting and uh, uh, a rather uh, uh, frequently cited uh, one of the articles and one of the attempts, uh, trials done in some hospital there in Western uh, countries. It's about the wound healing and the fasting. A control trial, I have given the reference. This reference is something which is quite uh, interesting from the point of view of uh, the impact of the wound healing and uh, the fasting. It, it is done both in vitro and in vivo study. This study is very extensive and I think uh, anyone who is interested can go through this uh, URL and get the article. It is a very extensive article. I have just copied a few images from that article where the impact of the fasting or wound healing is studied, like you have the control group 
and the wound healing in cases of burn and diabetic wound conditions. In the burn wound and diabetic wound conditions, the changes which happen. So very objective and very pinpointed study about the apasarpana in the wound healing. See, apasarpana, the langhana in other diseases, of course, there are lots of researchers that are coming up now. We have plenty of other new articles, or, uh, some excellent articles coming up and lots of research is going on in the, on the issue of the, uh, uh, the fasting and related issues, dietary restrictions and other many diseases. Some of the other interesting uh, articles related to wound healing, I have again quoted a few of them. Uh, those who are interested, they may go through these articles which are available on the net and uh, uh, that is an eye opener. Rather, when Sushmita has told this 5,000 years back, or uh, two years earlier, like something around uh, 2002, I remember the situation when in 2002 when I was presenting in a conference on Oom Hiri in uh, Banaras, lots of other doctors, in the front of other contemporary doctors, they are just making fun of the issue like how a dietary restriction can affect the healing. Now, if you look at the uh, research area, there is new articles coming up. There is a floodgate of uh, uh, these articles related to the fasting and its benefits on different diseases conditions. And uh, that, proves, that proves that whatever the principles which are mentioned in uh, our old ancestral science, they are still relevant. Now that's about the issue of the wound healing. And the another another article, uh, very important article, again, which gives you again very objective and clear cut picture about the mechanism of the wound healing with this uh, passing and impact on the skin anatomy and physiology. It's not only about the wound healing, about the physiological appearance of the skin and uh, its impact. Also, it's uh, and it's a very comprehensive review article. You can go through this reference in Indian journal, which also gives that same issue and uh, it, it proves, like it demonstrates, like the fasting which will have impact on different aspects of the skin physiology as well as the wound healing force as such. The other way, if you eat more, what happens? The free radicals and the oxygen theory, which is again a new theory rather new in the sense, uh, that's around 15 to 20 years old theory, which has become popular and rather it's one of the very popular theory that, where almost every disease is supposed to be produced due to that free radicals and oxidants and antioxidants, they are being marketed like anything and many of that uh, Ayurvedic medical medicines also are sold as uh, antioxidants. But the basic uh, issue of that oxidants and the free radicals, they come from the excess of macronutrients resulting in obesity and then which results in the pro-inflammatory state and it also can result in different diseases. These are the well known diseases which could be produced due to the excess of the food consumed. So, that Brahmana producing more diseases than the Langhana, Langhana being uh, rather more healthier than the Brahmana, that kind of a concept which is of Ayurvedic, primary Ayurvedic concept has been now proved relevant in the current situation. Though many of our uh, practicing doctors do not follow that, they are overloading the patients with nutrients and uh, vitamins and so on, which is an unnecessary over, uh, prescriptions which are burdening the patient as such in every disease. It's not only about the wound, in every disease. So, that's one of the area. Lankhana or Afadarpana is one of the strong area of our Ayurvedic principle, which is relevant in the management of any other diseases as such. That's about the Afadarpana as such. Next of the procedure protocol in the wound management is Lepa. So, we should see the math ratio, Rene Shubra, Rene Shubra, Rene Shubra, Rene Shubra,
in the uh, so in the context we are not going to all that details like the varieties of Udeha, Pradeha, that all that portion which we have discussed in the Sutrasa and may refer to that also. In case of the Vrana, in the management of the implementary conditions, Sushita says the application of the Lepa will be producing a effect uh, and rather it is more effective in the early stages of the implementary swelling. Or in the later stages of the womb, where the patient would have more painful wounds, Udra Rudya Shita, you have to have a vapor with the specified medicines and it's compared to a product, uh, it's the effect of sudden reducing the inflammation. And the similarly given is like water poured, poured over a burning. Uh, house, if a uh, house catches fire, the immediate uh, uh, me remedy would be pour water over the burning fire that extinguishes the fire. Similarly, vapor which is applied over the inflammatory filling, it will reduce that inflammation and it helps in making the tissue healthier. Also, it helps in shosana, removal of the slug or the red material. And it acts as anti inflammatory, shopasya harane, shopaharana, reducing the swelling or anti inflammatory effect. Lepa would act as an anti inflammatory effect. As well as it helps in the growth of the tissue, sadhana is a growth of the tissue, and the dopana is a healing, the ultimately the healing process. These are the utsadhana and dopana, the word meaning of that, and uh, more of details of that we will be discussing later on. Utsadhana also is one of the uh, Shashya Upakrama, and the Upakrama in the case of the womb healing. So there we will have more opportunity to discuss about what is Utsadhana and how it is achieved like. Now, uh, Ropana also is a similar issue. We will discuss more about that later on. The, then, Ratishwa Pet, Vedra Pachana, Sarki, Stailar, Dhanyam, La Mamsa, Rasa, Vataharo, Shani, Nishpati, Hirkite, Hibrishe, Kanpuveda. Pitta Sabika, the Vishani Pitta's Shira, Rita, Madhu, Shatara, Udoka, Ikshu, Rasa, Madhura, Ushaka, Shira, Vishanish Pati, Amusne, Hippershaitan, Kurita. Spacious for Pesu, Taila, Mutra, Sharo, the Sura, Sutta, Kapon, the Nish Pati, Hirshiti, Hippershaitan, Kurita. Eta Amubis, Jamanaha, Santin, Nathan, Yachiti, Dosan, Nirevu, the Hura, Parishaka, and Samadhi. To prepare the yogas for the Lepa, in case of water, the Piadi, you have to add either Gurdva, Taila, Bhanyamla, etc. The drugs which are having water shaman effect. In case of Pitta Javyadi, Kshira, Gurdva, Madhu, Chattara, etc. which is having the Pitta shaman effect along with the other medicines and in the Kapha Javyadi, Taila, Mutra, Chara, etc. But the important is that in all the context of the, the lay person, there is one practice of things, either it could be Gurdva or it could be Taila, which is applied. Of course, in Sukhasana, Sushuga refers to that issue also, the ratio of the Snigdhavadatta, that oily substance, either it could be oil or it could be the fat or uh, 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 grita or any of that Snigdhavadatta. And the ratio in case of Vatanyavyadi, the ratio would be more, in Kapanyavyadi, the ratio would be lesser. But in any of the lepas, the, there is, has to be an application or some component of the fatty substance. That's about the lay asset. Now, a bit about a comparable issues in the contemporary situation. In the contemporary medicine, one of the major uh, methods of uh, dealing with the inflammatory conditions is what we call as the pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals is the medicines which are applied over the surface of the body in any of the disease conditions. It could be healing uh, uh, and so on. Now, Sutta in the Shastir Paprama, among the Shastir Paprama, there are many different techniques of the topicuticals, and they are either Alepa, Palishaka, Abhyanta, Upanaha, Patana. Now, these words we will be discussing in detail later on as we go into these topics. But one of the common issues is Dharana, Sandhana, Pirana, Tonita, Stapana, Uttarika, Kataya, Varti, Kalka, Serpi, Taira, Rasatriya, Avatuna, Utsada, Namasada, and Mandukarma. Dharma Karma, Krishna Karma, Pandu Karma, Pratisarana, Dhoma Sanjana, Lopaharana, Madhu Chalpi. Now these are all the different methods about some, uh, or different varieties of the substances applied over the surface of the body. 
and they are uh, advised or they have a very specific indication and there is slight modification in the technologies and by modification of certain of the technology like RFI is application of a thick substance which is pasted to the form of the paste whereas Parishaka and Amhyanga are pouring in a liquid Parishaka is pouring a liquid whereas Amhyanga is pouring an oily substance Dharana or Pirana Lepas are the Lepas they applied without prefer or without any of the fatty substance and they are for the purpose of squeezing and so on so in each of these protocols there is something which is totally unique and uh, different with a specific purpose. Whereas in the contemporary science, the topicuticals are just considered in the based upon their phys physical appearance. The topicuticals which are present in the present day situation are like ointment, liniment, cream, or lotions or gel. And their indications are and they are named based upon their consistency. So now I am just comparing the topicutical issue in the contemporary situation and what Sushruta has told. Sushruta has suggested these varieties of the topicuticals with a different clinical purpose and they with a different clinical target asset and which has to be used in different stages of the world. Whereas the present day available situations, the classical issue is uh, are the uh, uh, substances which are uh, classified as a simply based upon their physical appearance like ointment which is waxy, liniment which is soapy or with the alcoholic base and cream is equal parts of water and oil, lotions and there is more of water, gel is cellulose with alcohol and water and their indications are like um, uh, there, there is not much of it, much difference. The uh, advantages and disadvantages are in case of an ointment there is no preservative added and it's a uh, uh, produces occlusive which covers and lubricates the area and maintains the humidity in the area and retains that uh, uh, humidity in the area and that of course the negative is about it is a creamy and uh, mainly used in dry or thick lesions, keratic lesions as such whereas in hairy areas it is not indicated. In case of the cream the advantages are it is uh, useful in high humidity good lubrication and retaining the water, hydrating water as such and requires frequent application. It cannot be just applied once and forgotten, it has to be applied repeatedly and uh, mainly used in case of uh, uh, these uh, areas with the poor hygiene or poor access like glutealar axillary area and uh, it exudative inflammation. In case of acute exudative inflammation, it is used as such. In general, whereas lotions they are used, uh, they also have preservatives, they are having preservatives as such and mainly alcohol containing uh, issues and hence may produce a dryness of the skin and uh, it can have some advantages of cooling effect whereas uh, the disadvantages are it can produce, it needs frequent application and produces the dryness of the skin and uh, uh, mainly it is um, uh, it can, is used preferably in case of very superficial keratinous lesions and uh, cannot be uh, applied for deeper lesions and uh, more these uh, moist areas it can produce a moist conditions also as such that's about the advantages of the lotion and of course it can be applied in hairy areas gel of course is uh, comparatively least potent whereas ointment is considered to be more potent as such and uh, preservatives of course there are and uh, because of the alcohol it may produce a stinging effect the same dryness of the skin can occur it produces a cooling effect of course and it's a transparent and colorless and uh, it leaves a residue over the area if applied that produces residue and that residue can maintain uh, cause unhygienic conditions later on if it is not cleaned properly and mainly used in exudative conditions and hairy areas. That's about the indication. So compared to the different uh, topicuticals which we will be discussing in Sushruta, as they come up, the general approach of the topicuticals in the current situation is uh, totally different. And the method of uh, absorption, for absorption of the substances which are applied over the surface, the method is either it could be intracellular root or trans uh, uh, appendageal roots through the sweat glands or other roots 
and intercellular route in between the cell spaces. For all these absorptions, there is a need to be having a medium of fat. A lipid uh, medium is necessary. And only with the lipid uh, is route, the uh, maximum absorption will be facilitated through the intercellular route in the, when you apply it over the area. And this will be facilitated. The methods of facilitating this absorption now are, there are many, you may use microneedles, you may use antiphoresis, or you may use sonophoresis where ultrasound waves are used, or velocity based devices, or thermal ablation, uh, heating the area. Now, all the methods like Abhyanga or Sweda or so on, the protocol will have to be done after the application of the lepa or application of the lepa is either hot or the cold they are meant for regulating the absorption whenever Sushuta has mentioned about different varieties of these uh, uh, protocols like uh, Parishaka, Abhyanga etc and with Sadhana, Avasadhana and so on you know all that the basic issue is about uh, regulating this uh, absorption of the contents of the lepa which is applied over the area so though the word lepa is a single word which covers up all these varieties of these uh, techniques, the final variation is about moderately absorption. Now in the current method, you have that different techniques of uh, maybe, maybe more advanced methods of regulating the absorption and they are considered under one head of topicuticals. That's uh, in general about the lepa and a certain broader issues which are relevant in uh, the other contexts also, which I may not again refer again and again. Then the next is about Abhyantaha. Abhyantas to dosham alokya upayuktaha, dosham prasamam rudhudhanta karoti, sveda vimlapanandinam kriyanam praksa uchyate, paschat karma sucha adishtaha, sacha vishramanadisho. Abhyanta is applying a oily substance without any uh, dry substance there. Oily substance directly over the surface of the body and that's uh, the Abhyanta. And uh, whether Abhyanga requires massage or not, that's uh, the different issue. From my point of view, Abhyanga is not really massage, it's just applied over the surface of the body and it's applied just against the direction of the hair follicles. That's why it's called as Abhyanga. It's uh, against the uh, hair follicles, direction of the hair follicles, so that it facilitates the absorption through these uh, uh, appendages of the skin, that is sweat glands and so on. Of course, in uh, Brahmani Vyakarana, Sushil has mentioned about the absorption of the uh, substances, the media of the drug through the Brahmanis, Tejyaka uh, Brahmanis which are covering the body. So, that's all the point like, the application of these uh, oily substances and their clinical effects uh, by the absorption is the important issue. Uh, and uh, according to Sushan again, the Abhyanga is done as a pre-procedural event or uh, uh, prior to the procedure of Shodhana or it can be done even after the procedure of Shodhana like Vistravada, Rakta Mokshana, it is done after the Rakta Mokshana, so on, to facilitate the movement of the doshas. In case of the woman or Viridana, Abhyanga is done in the form of, with the idea of dosha Utkleshana facilitating the movement of the vitiated components from the surface of the body or different areas of the body to the uh, 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 in this colon as such. Now from the current physiology point of view, it is now well known and it is uh, proved like the absorption of the substance from the skin area is also quite significant and they can, it can be facilitated by the different techniques which I have just referred to and the application of a fatty substance facilitates this uh, absorption of the drug and the drug can reach to any surface of the body or any area of the body and one of the advantages of application of the drug or absorption of the drug through the skin is not only local, it also has a systemic effect and the major advantage is it by bypasses the entire hepatic circulation. Whenever you take a substance from the oral route, the substance has to pass through the liver, liver being one of the major chemical uh, factory which uh, modifies the molecules or destroys the molecules. The benefits of such drugs may not reach to the other systems of the body. 
whereas when it is applied over the surface of the body the skin which is absorbed uh, through it bypasses that uh, hepatic circulation and hence even a small quantity of the drug can benefit or reach to the target area and produce the clinical benefits and hence in the modern pharmacology it's one of the uh, quite significant method of administration of the drug where the drug is administered over the surface of the body and maybe the future techniques like iantaporosis iantaporosis is one of the techniques which is gaining very po uh, high popularity now and becoming more reliable and uh, uh, maybe in the future you may have lots of such iantaporosis drugs which are available which are just one of the modifications of the concepts of uh, the ayurvedic principle of administering the drug as the next is uh, rujavatam dharana nam kathinam devata शोकानाम स्वेदनम कार्यम च एव चापि एवं विधाह प्रणाह एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द हीट ओवर द एरिया वार्मिंग द एरिया ऑफ द बॉडी वार्मिंग द एरिया ऑफ द बॉडी इज वन ऑफ द टेक्निक्स व्हिच इज क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफ फैसिलिटेटिंग अगेन आइदर इट कुड बी फैसिलिटेटिंग द एब्सॉर्प्शन ऑफ द सब्सटेंसेस इट आर अप्लाइड एज इन केस ऑफ द रेप ऑफ जंग एटसेट्रा इवन विद आवर दैट इफ वी जस्ट अप्लाई अ वार्म टू ओवर द एरिया it increases the blood flow now the it's now studied and what we know is uh, if you uh, apply cold substances over the surface of the body the blood flow to the skin gets reduced if the temperature is raised then the blood flow also increases up to a certain limit of the uh, it is uh, physiological limits beyond that of course it may not so there is a physiological limit threshold limit of the temperature facilitating the blood flow over to the skin and uh, this has many benefits benefits in the sense when the blood flow to the skin or the subcutaneous area in an inflammatory pathology is uh, uh, increased then there could be a more faster flushing out of the mediators of the inflammation and as the mediators of the inflammation are flushed out due to the faster blood flow the intensity of the pain felt by a person would be reduced so that's uh, the idea but at the same time application of for this heat in a chronic degenerative disease which produces a pain and deep seated pain conditions may not benefit rather it may harm in the sense it increases the blood flow to only to the skin as in the case of osteoarthritis where the pain is deep seated in the bone the blood flow to the uh, uh, your bones also may increase but in case of degenerative pathology that increase in the blood flow may worsen the condition in terms of regenerating new bones or rather osteophyte formation can be faster so that specific indications for the swedana or heat has to be considered in the present day uh, situation there is one specific branch of medicine called as thermotherapy and cryotherapy where the heat and the cold either are applied in separate conditions or maybe as alternative which also are considered to be one of the alternate method of treatment and the general indications are when heat is applied it reduces the pain spasm and enhances the metabolism at the area blood flow is enhanced the inflammation it enhances the inflammation rate of inflammation is enhanced so in a case of inflammatory conditions heat is not generally preferred edema is enhanced and uh, extensibility spread of the inflammation is also enhanced whereas cold application it reduces the pain it reduces the spasm and uh, metabolism also is reduced blood flow also is reduced so cold would have always inhibitory effect on all and based upon that the and of course the physiological effects of the steam bath now another method of swedan the physiological effects of the steam bath are uh, very well studied and uh, the different uh, body contents so hormones and the follicle different hormones which are changed due to the steam bath are studied in now and particularly it enhances the adrenergic hormones all adrenergic hormones uh, like aldosterone angiotensin these are enhanced and because of that it enhances the circulation dynamic circulation becomes a hyperdynamic as such and the growth hormone also is enhanced by the swedan Uh, or what we call as a steam bath swedana if you consider as a generalized issue see swedana could be localized where you may do a fomentation over the wound area or inflamed area that the local effect where the blood flow is enhanced 
when swedhana is given in general in general as a stream but like conditions the effect would be on the hormonal stages of the conditions of the body and it will have a facilitation of the circulation the circulation becomes hyperdynamic and the theory like the swedhana produces the movement of the doshas from the shakha to the kosta can be definitely demonstrated and definitely proved with the objective evidence with the, the physiological changes which occur in the body after the uh, fermentation or after this uh, steam bath what is mentioned as snehklinaha kosagaha dhatugava srutolina maya shakha samstaha doshaha swede iste dravikritya kosam nitaha samyak shuddhi bhidhiyante the facilitation of the doshas movement towards the kosta by the steam bath is now that uh, can be objectively proved with the, the changes which occur in the body as such. Now in general whenever you, you have a problem uh, many a times you will have a situation where a patient wants to have some local treatment whether it has to be cold or heat that's the question and uh, the indications are if you use uh, the uh, cold and heat in different conditions what happens if you use uh, uh, heat in arthritis like conditions it can enhance the inflammation whereas uh, in case of strains and sprains heat is be better whereas uh, inflammatory conditions like uh, arthritis or tendinitis uh, the cold can reduce the pain to a certain extent so in brief that's about the issue the next is about vimlapanam uh, vimlapanam means a real massage where you rub the area sthiranam rajitam mandam karyam vimlapanam bhavet Abhijja Sveda Yitvaku Venu Nadyat Vashani Vimarta Yeta Vishak Pragna Talena Angustakena Va Vimla Pana is a rubbing over the area and the rubbing is done usually after a snehana and swedana Abhijanga applying the lip uh, oil and then a local fermentation then followed by that is the Vimla Pana and that Vimla Pana rubbing or a thick rough massage is not indicated in every condition it's only in Sthirana, Rujata Mandam, where the pain is lesser and the, there is an indurated swelling. The swelling has become harder, indurated. In that condition, Vimlapana has to be done. And for the Vimlapana, according to the condition, you may prefer any instruments, instruments like a Venunadi, a, a, a bamboo a stick, rolling, a rolling bamboo stick can be used. Now, of course, you have different machines used for massage. There are a lot of instruments, different modified instruments uh, which are uh, either having some automatism or maybe hand handheld varieties of these materials and they are quite popular now and this uh, that's exactly what Susu has used as a Venunadi. Venunadi is a, a bamboo uh, roller or it could be Angustakena or Hastatarena with the, the palm or with the, the thumb depending upon the country. The benefits of massage therapy now, now again, massage therapy is one of the very popular technique now and uh, many of uh, the people who prefer Ayurvedic treatment are, there is an impression in the society like uh, Ayurvedic Panjagarma is the massage and uh, if you do not do the massage, the patient would not be happy. So, the massage centers, spas, they are now the rather uh, more popular presentations of Ayurvedic treatment. Uh, anyway, and uh, I'm not criticizing those issues, that's not the purpose. The advantages which are known now are, which are demonstrated are, it improves uh, the sleep quality, it improves, uh, uh, it enhances the circulation of course, stimulates the movement of lymphatic fluid, it improves the joint mobility, relieves stress, improves mental alertness, boosts immune functions, reduces tension in the muscles, and it uh, speeds the heating, uh, healing of the soft uh, tissue injuries and uh, it uh, even eases muscle pain. These are the proven, uh, rather uh, claimed advantages of the massage therapy. But massage in a healthy person, fine, it gives all the benefits. And if at all it's done in a case of inflammatory diseases, it may not help. Rather, the massage would break down the barriers which are formed. See, the whole purpose of the inflammation in the body would be to localize, to limit the area of the damage so that the impact of the damage doesn't spread to the body. But if you apply the massage 
in such conditions where the localization is still growing or going on and uh, it's not really no, com- contained right the massage can was in the condition and hence only in those conditions where there is a total fibrosis and a total granuloma formation a massage may benefit in facilitating the drugs to reach the area and that's exactly what sushila has mentioned sthirana mrudha mandam mrudha tam sthirana that's a badly lesion is harder that suggests you have a fibrosis condition and well localized condition or where the granuloma is formed and hence the drugs cannot reach to the area there is a barrier and the barrier prevents the drug from reaching to the area to break the barrier you have to use the bimlavana or massage it's not that massage is done in every condition and uh, uh, whenever such a situation occurs the intensity of the pain lesser becomes lesser it becomes a chronic one and only in that condition the massage is uh, suggested so whenever you advise massage it's better to be judicious in any disease conditions healthy persons giving massage and spa is a different issue but when it comes to question of disease managing the disease conditions the you have to have a clear idea like the specific indications of the massage otherwise it can be you no know, may not be beneficial to the person now in the present situation there is a another new branch of uh, uh, healing comes up which is called as mechano transduction mechano transduction is a, a defined as a transformation of a mechanical stimulus into a chemical signal and resulting cellular signaling cascade after the external mechanical deformation of the tissue this is a new branch which is coming up where lots of machines are being used and uh, such technology of uh, application of the movement over the area not simply the massage now whenever we say massage massage is something which in, looks crude in terms of that mechano transduction mechano transduction is using certain very sophisticated machines where the pressure effects on the specific areas are uh very regulated based upon lot of issues it's a new brand coming up uh and uh, maybe mm, uh, it's not yet popular in our area in in our country in some areas it they are popular and in japan this mechano transaction is now coming up as a, a very popular brand and i don't have much details but that's one of the area where we need to keep an attention maybe uh, in due course of time we may have more uh, information about that the next is about upana shopayo upana ham to kuriyad ama vidadhyo abhi dagdha sham myati vidadha paka me vidha upana ha is application of a warm poultice a paste of substance which is warm is a sort of lepa it's a modification of lepa uh, upana ha and the lepa they are come under the same chapters in the lepa chapter again sushila has referred upana ha also as one of the varieties of the lepa now application of a thick poultice a uh, thick uh, paste of the drug substance over the surface of the body uh, and the whole purpose of application of such lepa in sushruta is very critical or very uh, specific in a patient in a condition where the information has progressed the consequence of the information could be either the information may subside and can be controlled by the body or information may result in a purulent reaction from the current point of view that conversion of information into a purulent reaction pus forming condition is a complication from sushruta sir ayurvedic point of view that the pus formation is one of the sequel eh, by which you can terminate the information the information can end up once the pus is formed and the contents of that pus is uh, drained out the information subsides so there is a, a totally difference of approach or difference of perception about the diseases of inflammatory conditions in the current situation pus formation in a case of inflammation condition is a, considered to be a complication not a sequelae whereas uh, from ayurvedic point of view it's a, one of the sequelae and hence if the inflammation cannot be reversed by the initial protocols like arayapatya virekanta ekadasha upakramaha the 11 protocols from alayapa to the vireka if it cannot be reversed and if you are not sure whether it is going to be reversed or not the upanaha can be considered as a test method a clinical test you apply the lepa the upanaha and we either the lepa upanaha can reverse facilitate the reversal of the inflammation 
or it can result in the formation of the pus in a controlled manner. So, the next protocol is about the uh, formation of the pus or controlling the formation of the pus in a controlled manner so that it doesn't go beyond control. Now, this is a test method. Upanahi is applied in such a condition where you are not sure whether your uh, protocols of reversing the information uh, have been successful or not, whether it can be reversed or not. In that condition, you apply the Upanaha and wait, see, either the information may reduce, so if it reduces, fine, you follow the other protocols and ensure that the patient has recovered. If it results in uh, aggravation of the implemented science, then go to the next protocol of uh, uh, controlled uh, separation or controlled pus formation. In the current pharmacology also, poultices or application of different sort of substances over the area of the body, they are practiced and uh, uh, there are, uh, or rather, though it's not a very popular technique in case of the ulcers or in other conditions uh, like infective, local infective conditions, such substances are being used and uh, a good number of good number of research articles are coming up in that area also. I have just referred to one of the uh, maybe one or two of the very uh, uh, rather detailed and uh, which gives some uh, different perception about the poultices than simply the local treatment uh, in case of the wound and so on. Somewhat more standard type of the articles I have referred to. So those who are interested they may read these articles which are available in the net. I will not go into the detail much of that. Then, Nivartte Yannash Yashopa Virekante Yupaka Mehe Tasse Sambhajanam Kuriyad Samahatya Aushadhanto Dhani Takra Sura Shukta Dhanyam Dehi Yodhani Tu Snigdhani Lavani Kritya Pache Dutkari Kam Shubham Sairanda Patraya Shopam Nahayal Ushnaya Tatha Hitam Sambhajanam Chapi Pakaya Arimuko Yadi Now, the same issue which I just referred to earlier if the information cannot be reversed, then it has to be a pattern, a controlled information, controlled infection, controlled separation is the pattern, which is not at all relevant, not at all considered as a sequence of events in the contemporary sense. The contemporary sense is considered as a complication. So you cannot find anything as such. But once one fact which we know is if the information doesn't get resolved, the next process is abscess formation. And that abscess formation would end in healing after a step-by-step -step protocol of the pus getting drained out. So the fact that uh, abscess formation or the pus formation is a consequential event occurring after the inflammation is absolutely true. The only difference is now it is considered as a complication and all of our attempt is done to prevent this. So you have the recourses like um, antibiotics. Uh, which can reduce that pus formation acid. Whereas, from Ayurvedic approach point of view, this is done that pus formation is facilitated in such a way that the trouble to the patient is reduced. See, one of the most important issues is during that process of the pus formation, the initial stages, there will be more pain and the symptoms will be more, the chances of the toxemia, systemic complications are higher. So instead of leaving it to the nature to form the pus, if you control in such a way that the pus is formed without these complications and occurs as early as possible in an expected manner, in a manner in which you want it to be so that you can drain it out easily, that's the protocol of Pachana. Pachana is having that methods by which the drain duration taken for the pus formation and the intensity of the pus formation, possibly of the possibility of the systemic complications can be reduced. Such all that put together is the pattern. Among the pattern, one of the methods, the commonest method which is used in Sushura spirit is Utkarika, a puri like substance which is uh, uh, prepared by boiling it in heated oil or ghee and or it could be Erandapatra like substances with warm which is applied over the area and at the same time you also have to have regulation of the food hitam sambhojanam the food has to be in such a way that it facilitates the controlled pus formation and there again is the same issue utkleda kari ahara among those which consider produces the pus formation are dadhi is considered one of the uh, 
rather agre aushari padapaswarmishna dadi and takra these are considered as a one of the methods of paswarmishna or rather in sushuta and uh, among the puya vardhaka gana uh, in the sutra sana there is one specific gana puya vardhaka gana and that puya vardhaka gana dadi is considered to be one of the important issue anyway such of the protocols could have suggested so dietary restrictions local application of a warm substance and warm substances kept again in the form of a fried uh, these uh, substance some uh, a paste of the drug uh, substances are uh, uh, converted into a fried substance like puri and it's applied with the lavana with the salt as such now of course practical experience of doing this i don't have i have not tried that but in folklore practice this kind of situation is there there are many uh, folklore practices where many of the food substances are applied over the area and uh, uh, that helps in reducing the pain and uh, facilitate the course of inflammation then vedana upashamarthaya tatha pakashamayata achirodpati desho ape kuriyat shonita mokshanam sacho ape kathine jyame sarakte vedana avati samrabdhe vishame chapi prane visravanam hitam savije chapisheshena ಜಲೋಕಾಭಿಪದೆ ಸದಾ ವೇದನಾಯ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತ ಪಾಕಸ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಪ್ತೆಯೇ ತಥಾ ದಿ ರಕ್ತ ಮೋಕ್ಷಣ ಈಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೋಟೋಕಾಲ್ ರಕ್ತ ಮೋಕ್ಷಣ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಟೇಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೂತ್ರ ಸ್ಥಾನ ಅರ್ಯರ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಯರ್ ಸರ್ನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಶಾರೀರ ಸ್ಥಾನ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರಿವಿಯಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ದಿ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಟಾರ್ಗೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರಕ್ತ ಮೋಕ್ಷಣ ಇನ್ ದ ಇನಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಬ್ರಾಣ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲಮೆಟರಿ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಬಿ ವೇದನ ಉಪಶಮಾರ್ಥಾಯ ಇಟ್ ರಿಡ್ಯೂಸಸ್ ದ ಪೀಲ್ and pakashamaya it can also act as a method by which inflammation can be reversed or it also in the same is repeated vedana ha prashantyartam pakasya prapti etat in the last part of the shloka also the same is repeated and there jaloka is specified or it also could be done in sashope kathine vyame sarakte vedana in a chronic wound which has very chronic inflammation and has become fibrosed and has become bluish due to the Uh, stagnation of the blood where there is a vascular stress in jama is bluish considered or sarakte where there is more of bleeding highly vascular conditions or samrabdhe vishame japi the surface is irregular the growth of uh, granulation tissue is irregular or where the uh, tissue this wound has become stable or chronic like uh, a vascular samrabdhe is uh, where the blood flow is reduced in condi- such conditions also rakta mokshana is indicated so rakta mokshana is indicated in case of vrana in two stages either in initial stages to prevent the inflammation or reverse the inflammation or in the later stages where the healing has failed in the failed healing conditions rakta mokshana is indicated and uh, specifically jaloka are specified in case of the rakta mokshana or pada that's making prachana these are the specified protocols in case of the vrana the sira vedha also may be suggested as a, a protocol now from the current point of view local reduction of the blood flow in the wound area now is known like uh, it can reduce the growth of the uh, it can inhibit the growth of the bacteria the iron chelation one of the, uh, though it's not the blood letting which is done one of the protocols by which many of the gram negative organism growth can be inhibited be by chelating the air iron is one of the essential materials required for the flow uh, this growth of the bacteria in the wound conditions particularly in the it, this is very specific about the wound conditions and by reducing the iron by applying chelating substances the iron is precipitated the growth of the pseudomonas is reduced this is one of that experimentation done and the results of the experiment shown a continued growth in the presence of sufficient iron and if the uh, iron is knocked out by these uh, like pyoverdin and in as such the growth of the bacteria is uh, reduced so this is uh, uh, somewhat true but this kind of a technique is not popular it's not done in every condition only in very advanced specific conditions where the growth of the bacteria otherwise cannot be reduced due to some other issues so on now there is a search for some methods of reducing the inf- uh, infections by other methods other than that of the antibiotics and this is one of such a methods maybe in future these kinds of the techniques may become popular and uh, 
there is some role for that local rectum oxygen. The uh, now because as I told you, the issue of the uh, reducing the iron content in the area and uh, facilitating the uh, control of inflammation. Uh, there are few more articles which are coming up now, and it's one of the rather new branch which it may be developed as well. Then uh, next is about Sneha Pana that I think we will continue in the next session. Sneha Pana and Swedana Shodhana this will continue next session. If there are any questions I will try to answer and then find out. Then there is one question like um, uh, does uh, Vimla Pana help in improving fibrosis condition of lungs? Uh, See, Vimlapana is purely a local treatment and mainly it can be beneficial over the surface of the body. I don't think that it may be beneficial in case of a disease of the lungs. I don't, I don't have any direct experience of that. Uh, but uh, um, theoretically, uh, lungs may not be you know, the target of the Vimlapana in the form of direct application of the uh, movement as such. Indirectly, of course, when you do the massage, the circulation, the total circulation becomes hyperdynamic. By that, certain of the lung functions may improve, but it may not be improving the fibrosis as in case of a localized wound. That's it. Hmm? Right. No more questions. Huh? So we will wind up today.